Happy Thursday, for me anyway, morning, everybody, doing a, as I described it in many places, an early, for me, art stream this morning. Where did I post that? Oh, here I did. So I'm just, I did the same thing I did last time where I have pre-posted this in many places. So I'm just verifying that, you know what I realized? Well, it doesn't matter. I thought I had a typo on my stuff. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, never mind. I was going to say I'm not going to fix it. I, would, I, I thought I had spelled art as A-T-R. But as it turns out, I didn't. Therefore, no big deal. Yeah. Nice when you think you make a mistake and you actually don't. So, good morning. I don't know what your name is, Photo Walkthrough, but good morning. I don't know what your actual name is. I can refer to you as Photo Walkthrough. doesn't bother me, but good morning. Nothing much yet. I'm just in my little, I don't know, whatever I call Well, good morning, John. How you doing? I'm just uh, doing my usual little, well wait about five minutes before I get started thing to let people show up. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's normal for Twitch or not. I really don't. If, if people, I almost never catch streams as soon as they start. So I don't know what the generally accepted Twitch etiquette is for that. Are you supposed to wait a little bit to let people join the stream? Are you supposed to start right away? Oh, that's great, man. That's awesome. You know, I uh, I was going to do that actually this week. It's been ended up being a very kind of just unphotogenic week in Northern California because it's either been raining and gray, which don't get me wrong, they're I think some gray days are actually very good for photography, but they have to be the right kind. It can't just be I don't know. You have to have the right kind of rainy day for good photography. Um, and it hasn't been good for that so my try next week i've been trying to do that myself just kind of going around and and seeing what i did it a few weeks ago and i got some okay pictures not bad stuff you know yeah yeah and see i don't have any macro lenses um i mean technically my pixel can do macro photography i don't know how good it really is though i know i know camera phones are just as good as Camera, sorry. Oh, cameras on phones, everybody says they're just as good as regular cameras. I guess it's just because of my age. I can't get past the idea that they're really not. But, you know, they probably are. But, yeah, I um, I probably will next week. I think next week I'll probably talk, try to stroll around and take some photos, see what I can get early morning. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, the, the saying that the best camera is the one you have on you, yeah, absolutely. I'm not... I wouldn't contest that at all. You know, it, it is. If that's what you've got, then that is the best camera you have. And dragging around a camera all the time for certain people who are photographers or, you know, just are used to doing that, that's one thing. But that's just not something I typically... I, I, I try to streamline as much stuff as I'm carrying around. I don't like to be carrying around a lot of things. So it just depends. I mean, you know, different people live different lives, so... Um, and it's certainly not like I haven't seen beautiful photos out of a, a camera phone. I absolutely have. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be an elitist or something like that or one of those type of people. But just for me, if I'm going to go take photos, and that's my idea is to go take photos, my instinct is to bring my Canon camera, my actual dedicated camera with me. I don't mind, you know, some people who are still think that film is better than digital. I don't mind not having film anymore. It really does allow you to take way more pictures and be more experimental because you don't have to worry about the uh, how many p uh, pictures are left on the roll, whether you had just everything just right. There's so much you can adjust now. So photography in general is, a, is, is so much better, I think, in a lot of ways in the modern age. But I don't, you know, I still have a divide in my head between quote unquote real camera and camera phone. But that's just me. I will be sipping coffee intermittently for a little bit, so I will warn you. You may hear some slight pauses. 
as I do that. Okay, we're at the five minute mark. Let's go ahead and, okay, here we go. So I'm just testing my hotkeys again. So this one should go to the transition animation, which I know I, is now a running joke of me saying I'm going to be replacing this at some point. I will be replacing this at some point. I just don't have it done yet. Maybe that's a project for today. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, yeah, I've got stuff to do today, so we'll see. Okay, there we are. Okay. So let's turn my keyboard off so that I don't bump anything. There we are. Turn the iPad sideways. Give that a minute. There we are. So here we are with our holiday blob of eyes. And let's see here. Where was I? Oh, I think I was still, did I finish all the, oh, I was doing the shading on the eye, on the actual red, the eyeballs. That's right. And then I'll probably do a little bit on the actual white of the eyeballs to kind of do something there. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So I have done, I believe all the large eyeballs. Yes. I've done all the smallest eyeballs. Yep. So now what I need to do is let's go ahead and merge these. Actually, let's do this. This is easier. I don't know why I haven't been doing this all along. Group it. And then uh, flatten. And there's those. Why I wasn't doing that? Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to mute because I think I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Be right back. Ah, yep. Did not want to sneeze into the mic. I, I imagine that wouldn't be too fun to hear. Whoa. Especially because that was a big sneeze. Okay. So this should be our... All right. And these are which... What is this layer? Those are the little... These are the big. Okay. So let's go ahead and now we have to do, I guess, the medium eyeballs, I guess. I don't really know what the name is. I gotta say medium eyeballs. Okay. Medium eyeball time. All right, let's just make a nice circle. Or an ellipse, I guess. Um, I like that. That's good. That's, that's a good placement for that. Looks pretty centered, relatively. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. This is, as I say every time I work on this, this is not meant to be a highly realistic image, obviously. So I'm not gonna worry too much about symmetry and things like that. But, you know, I'm not trying to be sloppy about it either. So, let's see. Let's see. Actually, that's that's fairly well placed. Okay. That's luck. Usually it doesn't place that smoothly. Usually I have to do a little bit of rotation on it. Okay. Uh, let's copy that one. So, as you can see, this is a lot of just duplication and moving stuff into place. So, fairly simple this particular part, but, you know, still takes a little bit of adjustment here and there. Uh, let's see. Should, I don't know how many of these there will be. Certainly not as many as the other ones. Then, we'll, then what we're going to try to do is I have some ideas on a a shading thing I want to try. We'll, we'll see. Okay, hold on. Let me adjust that. Okay, eh, that's a little bit off for me. There we go. Even though, I mean, at, at its normal size, would anybody even notice that? One of the great dilemmas of, well, at least how I am, I don't know if all artists are this way, is I get very fixated on things that no normal human is ever going to see at the scale that they will typically be looking at these images at. They're, not gonna, they're just not going to see it. But I know it's there, but I see it. Again, the one of my favorite quotes from the Shadow movie. None of them can see it. But I see it. Yeah, that's pretty good. A little bit, a little bit of adjustment. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Same problem with any photos. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No kidding. I, I did a... Um, I edited something for somebody the other day. And I mean, I, I'm using edit loosely. I'm cer I certainly would never describe myself as a photo editor. Uh, but 
this person um, had, I assume they had to be wedding photos, but I didn't ask. You know, it's it's not somebody I really knew well, so I didn't want to you know dive too much into into why certain people were being removed from photos. It sounded like maybe it was just a case where they wanted to get isolated photos with certain members of the family and they weren't able to do it. Or maybe there was some kind of, I don't know, outside factors onto the removal of these people. I didn't ask. But I, I essentially, because it was only going to be for a, um, I think they were printing it maybe, what is it, 4 by 6 and 8 by 12 I think the 8x12 or 8x10, whatever the standard photo size, that was as big as it was going to be. So it wasn't something where at the size it was going to be printed that you could really see, but I got really hung up on this one small area of grass because, you know, I was using a lot of the content aware fill and the cloning tool because honestly, you can accomplish now 90% of removing people just with that stuff. And this one little piece of grass, I just kept looking at it and it just looked wrong to me. I don't even know if another person who didn't know what the picture looked like originally would even have noticed or if they would have just assumed it was an a, a imperfection with the grass. But man, I couldn't let go of that. That hung me up for a while. I got it where I needed it to be. It was fine. But I, that's another thing where I sit there and go, the world before Photoshop in terms of photo editing. Because, I mean, I took a, when I was in high school, many, many, whoops, many years ago, I took what was called a, it was called like a mixed media class or something like that. And, you know, I do that, I end up throwing this layer chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, it, it really does, that, it's true. That does end up being a lot of it is, can I just crop this out instead of fighting with this thing for so long? Yeah, no, that does become a, that is a very accurate representation of many solutions. But I remember in, in the, the media, I think it was called, wow, man, it was something media. It wasn't mixed media. It was something besides that, but whatever it was, great class. I mean, it was a fan, the teacher in that class, she was fantastic. Um, very, very sarcastic, but very smart. One of the best teachers, I can't of course remember her name now because my memory's always been garbage and it's a lot of years ago, but I I vividly remember how great that class was. A lot of it was because of the teacher, which is, I think, often the case. Is we remember classes in school being great because of the teachers, not so much the classes in many cases. Um, but we would develop the film and then she had us doing kind of you know, where the coloration, where you would actually color on the photo, that type of thing. I don't know, I, there's a word for it. I don't know, I don't remember what it is, but the classic ways of editing and actually doing manual editing of photos to remove things or change things, remove things like clipping and then re-expose it, all this different stuff. And the thing about how much time, and, it, and honestly, it was trial and error if you got it right, uh, compared to now, where you really have such control. I mean, amazing control on what you can do in photos with these tools. It really is just staggering to, to consider what you can do, which is great. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different world and, and one that would be unrecognizable. <clears throat> I think about sometimes <laughs> if, if, what, it, what would people, I mean, I guess it's like those videos where kids play with a Game Boy and they can't understand why the Game Boy can only do so many things when they're used to playing games on their phones. It's the same thing that if you took some of the people who've grown up on modern tools and put them back and had them try to do all this manual stuff, I imagine they'd lose their minds, which isn't, you know, I don't say that to make fun. You, you get used to the power of the tools that you have. The same thing would be true if they'd taken me in that class and thrown me back 50 years in photography, you know? So, but it is interesting because there is so much power in, in, in the stuff that we use that we really have just become so used to. It really is bad. I mean, even what I'm doing here, even this idea of video streaming, compared to when I remember, oh, old man stories. I guess this is old man story morning compared to dialing up internet and not having 
instant messenger i remember instant i remember uh aol instant messenger launching and i've told some version of this story a bunch of times so i apologize if i'm repeating myself to anybody but john i think you're the only one here so you probably haven't heard this but i i remember when they were saying aim was coming around nobody i, I remember thinking how how are you gonna have it where if i type a message somebody can respond right away how would that even work it was such a wild concept now I mean, if anything, we're oversaturated with communication avenues where you can't disconnect from anything. That's that's a bigger issue than, you know, you probably are. So you remember this stuff. That's what I'm saying. It's it, our, our age in particular, there are certain crossover points in in history where major changes happened. And I, I was in a class. I took a class. Oh, I'm going to get a sip of coffee. One second. I finished my degree last year after letting it sit for 20 years because I was a moron. Kids, finish school. Don't wait. Do it. Do it while you're young. You don't want to do it later. But in any event, I was in this class that was a... I'm trying to remember. It was it was like, uh, like media and society, I think it was called. Essentially, it was a critical thinking class, which I'm always interested in. I, I've always... I find it fascinating to to examine how people perceive things and interpret things and think about things because I, I, so much of, of what we... Sorry about that. That would be my phone in the background. Uh, so much of, of things that we accept as, you know, I don't know, reality or whatever are really just aspects of perception and that's all fed out of what your experiences are, who you're exposed to, what you think about a lot of things that are being put in front of you. So I'm always fascinated by that. And to be fair, just to, just to be honest about it, just like I'm sure my parents and their parents and every set of older people before, there are perceptions that younger people are lazy or stupid or whatever. And you, you hear it every time. I remember hearing my parents talking about when I was young about kids, you, you know, you kids don't understand, blah, 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 blah. Every, every single generation does it. Everyone. So I went, you know what? I'm going to take, because I had to take the class anyway. So I figured, let me go in this class where I was easily, easily twice as old, if not more, than anyone else in the class. Even the teacher was uh, 11 years younger than me. By far the oldest person in there. And they had this word for, you know, uh, people who grew up before internet or persisted in internet or whatever in the transition point and then after. And I think in that transition point is where I am, where I remember when there was not widely available home internet. And even when there was, it was on a phone line and you couldn't, you know, you really couldn't do much with it. I mean, at the time we thought we could do everything, but really you couldn't. It was mostly bulletin board posts. You'd log on once or twice a day to see if anybody had responded. And it might take a week for somebody to post a message because it just wasn't easy. And that's one of those areas of age where I think there is a very different uh, perspective to things because... Okay, so yeah, you've beat me by a bit. I'm going to be 45 in a couple of months. So you're a little older, but, but same thing. I remember growing up without a computer. There were no computers in any houses. Uh, I got one when I was fairly young. I mean, I remember the original Atari. That was as advanced a computer as I originally remember. And then at some point, I think when I was 12 or 13, my father got a very simple IBM PC that had a, I think it was a four color monitor. Uh, I don't think that, I don't think that computer itself had I don't think we had a modem for it at first. I think I just remember playing, you know, games on floppy disks, like Dig Dug clones and stuff like that. So, yeah, they, they, it's a very different thing to remember. And this isn't me saying, you kids don't understand. It's not really that. It's just interesting to see how the world has changed. That's all. Oh, coffee is great. But that's not meant to me projecting some kind of superiority or anything. It's just interesting to me. That, um, I wonder if I can apply the same, I'm thinking about something, because now I've got the, I've got the coloring done. Do I want to do gray on the eyeballs? Mmm. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Do the eyeballs need a gray scale? 
Do they need the gray? I don't know. I'm thinking about this. I know I know. I want to do something else. I want to mess with something else here, but I'm just thinking about this. Um, you know what I might do? <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Actually, I know how I'll do it. All right, let's, let's group these, because these are all the same. So let's group this up. Group. And we'll take that group. And we'll flatten that group. And there's eyeballs. And let's go ahead and... What do I want to do with this? Hold on, I'm thinking about it. This is how art is done, at least for me, is sitting here trying to figure out what I want to do next. What do I want to do next? I'm trying to think of... I have, I have a couple of different competing ideas in my skull. So I'm trying to work out what I want to do here. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Because really, these are the same color. Let's group these colors. And we'll flatten that. And we'll call these dark reds. It's always good to label your layers. Which I'm terrible at. But and we'll call this light reds. But I'm trying. Just so I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay, what is this? Oh, that's the Santa hat. Um, that's a little Santa hat. The Santa hat's its own little thing, so I'm not worried about that. Okay. What layer is this? Okay, this is the divider layers. Oh, that's interesting. We're moving those lines. Well, whatever. So we'll call this, um, let's call this, uh, <laughs> eyeball bag boundary lines. I don't know what else to call them. But at least I know what they are now. Eyeball bag boundary line. What is this? Wait a minute, then what's that? Hold on. Oh, I had them separated. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Huh. Yeah, I guess that would make sense, because when I initially did it... Yeah, these lines are all separated. Hold on, I'll turn on the background so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. I forgot, these are actually separated lines. That's the mask. The mask I'm not so worried about, but yeah, these are two different boundary lines. Or potentially, oh, three different boundary lines. Oh, boy. That's right. Oh, blob lines. I do have them. Okay, so you know what? That's okay. Uh, so I guess I really don't need them. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Well, I don't really need them separated anymore. I mean, they, they don't need to be. So if I merge that down, does it preserve the mask? Okay, wait, did it just delete that? Hold on a minute. Did it just delete the mask? Well, it must have, because it went away. All right, let me do this. Yeah, okay. Um, well, let's do this. So this is the Santa hat. This is a sketch. That's my shadow lines. I know what those are. Okay, so let's go ahead and... There's really no reason for these to be separated anymore, so we can just call this... Santa hat, not Satan hat, Santa hat. There we are. So that's there. That can be together. Okay, so this is uh, eyeballs. That's the eyeballs. I got that. What is this? That's the interior details. Okay, I got that. Blob lines. Let's go ahead and get rid of that mask for a minute. And let's merge this. Because honestly, there's really no reason for these to be separated anymore. Even though that's not all the blob lines. So even there, I didn't do it right. What? Those aren't all the blob lines. Oh, well. So where are the interior lines? Hold on. I'm betting I just have them in the wrong layer somewhere. Let's take a look. Oh, the fun of trying to figure out what you screwed up. That's really interesting. Where are those lines? If they're not in there, where are they? Oh, shadow lines. I bet you I have one in the wrong spot. Or are those the interior shadow lines? Oh, that's what I did. Oh, fascinating. Hold on now. That's really interesting. I may have actually done myself a huge favor accidentally. By having the shadow lines separated, that's not usually how I do... Th I, I Well, I, I, it kind of is. Okay, because what I want to try is cross hatching on the black lines maybe with the layer mask um, of course this doesn't really need to be on its own now this can kind of just be out and separate like that because honestly it's the only thing in the group so there's not really a 
Not really a need for there to be group in there. A group there. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Let me look at the shadow lines again. And the shadow lines don't really need to... They're optional. Okay. 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 Well, in that case, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it... Because this is a very, very long line. So we'll call this eyeball bag lines. That tells me what it is. Okay. 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 All right. We're grooving here. Hold on up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So let's. Oh, I will mask. Uh, I will mask this back off. I like it's still holidays. Holidays for me go until the first of the year. You know, until it's the new year. It's still. I still. I like Christmas. I like this holiday. So we'll preserve it as much as we can through the Santa hat on this horrific image. <laughs> okay. So, on the black layer, I think on the mask, which is, I believe, what's selected. Let's verify. Yes. All right. Let me think about how I want to try to do this. And this is going to expose a few things because underneath the black layer, as you can see, I didn't really... Oh, you know what? I can do it now. Hold on. Um, yeah, I can do it now. I didn't extend the colors all the way. So you're seeing underneath, I only took the colors to the edge they needed to be. Which, you know, is somewhat typical. But, since I'm going to be... Since I want to mess around in these interior spaces... Ooh, these lines, too. I'm going to have to clean... i got to clean my lines up. So, bear with me. This is a little bit of maintenance here. And obviously, I don't know why this purple line is here. Is that just an empty line or is that an actual color? No, that's an actual color. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, so as you can see, my lines are not especially clean once you get into the transparency of it. By the way, if this isn't terminally boring, let me know. I don't know if people care about the process of these things. Um, I really don't know. I never know what people get out of these streams. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm particularly entertaining, so I don't uh, I don't pretend that I am. Okay, let's see here. But what I'm going to try to do is some kind of I don't know. I guess you would call it manga inspired or something cross hatching, because I've seen it a lot of times. I don't know. This may be very common. I don't know. Uh, you know what I need to do? I need to turn on the blacks, but I need to fade it down so I can see. Yeah, see, that shading will tell me where I am. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not filling in colors incorrectly. So, um, I often see styles of art that I really, really like. And I sit there and go, yeah, it's too bad. I can't ever do that. Even though I'm relatively sure I could, I just never have tried. So I'm going to experiment. Since this is really not a, an illustration, this, this bag of eyeballs is not really for anything outside of fun. You know, I'm trying to play around with some different stuff on it. And there's really no reason not to try out different types of... Is that the dark? It is. Of actual different art styles as well. I mean, why not? This is not an image I have to really worry about. It's not one that I can quote-unquote ruin. Or, I mean, there is no ruining anything in digital art. I am actually getting ready as an aside... I'm going to try to do, for the first time in a very long time, a traditional media illustration again. Which I have not done in a long, long time. Um, a while. Where I'm actually going to do it on physical paper, pen and ink, the way I used to do a lot of stuff. And, uh, and see how that goes. Because there's been some interest in... I've had people inquiring about buying an original piece of the magic card that I did. The thing is, there is no real original. I mean, there is. It's digital, though. So I have the prints available, but there is no original one-off piece that you can buy. So what I'm thinking of doing is some... Smaller scale original drawings based on 
maybe because I had I had a couple people that emailed me about the image and said, uh, and I can show you this in a second. Actually, I'll show you right now. So just take a break for this for a minute. So I had some people. Uh, here it is. That had said that they liked the. Actually, you know what? The better way to show you this. It, er, is the sketch in here? It's got to be, right? It has to be in here. Uh, of course, I, my stuff is so disjointed here. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I'm trying to look for the sketch. I know I... Uh, purple shell says... Maybe I don't have the sketches in here. <sighs> I think I don't. Sorry. Anyway, there's a sketch version of the Shieldred image that... Uh, was my, because when I did this stuff for Magic, they basically had asked for three or more idea sketches, kind of just, you know, ideas of what I wanted to do. <clears throat> and I had done a, I had done one I really liked, turn that mask off for a minute, that, oh, I have another mask on. Where's the other mask at? There, there it is. That I, I liked, but ultimately, and I agreed with them on this, that, that we went with a uh, different one. And again, I, I actually uh, had no issue with it. I liked, the, I liked the one that we went with. So neither of them were bad versions. But one of these people had said, oh, I really like the second version, because I published them on my Behance site. And I said, oh, here's the actual sketches. And I, I mean, I would, it would take a bunch of effort to, to, to reset up the share so you could see that. But in any event, I actually really like that second one, too. It's very similar to what the final one looked like. It's just that Shieldred's pose is different. Uh, uh, here, I'll show you. I can do a quick sketch of it so you can see what I mean. So in the final version, Shieldred kind of, and this is very, very loose, so bear with me. She's kind of leaning back like this, you know, and she's got her big horns and all this stuff, right? So the horns are there. And then her arms are outstretched this way with these halos around them. So, you know, so she's got her hands out and she's got the power lines coming off them to control all the people down here. But the original one, the one that I did, or not the original one, but the second one that I did was more like, how do I do this properly? Uh, hold on, I'll, I'll just draw it. Was more like her head was down. So, and this is again, very loose. So just bear with me where she was like grinning, but looking very evil and the horns were kind of angled a little bit more like this. And then her arms were, and of course I'm doing this over other stuff in the same color, but her arms were more downward cast. Otherwise pretty similar. And then I think I had some more like centipede legs coming off her this time. So I think I'm gonna do something like that where it's gonna be the same character, but in a in a more kind of, because what, what the brief was for the, the card was they wanted it as if it was a stained glass in a church that people were worshiping. So that's why it has more of a sort of a classical religious type of look where she's kind of back, you know, back as in, you know, this is the, this is the might of my power and worship me and blah, 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 blah. Whereas the drawing I might do might be more of a I don't know, like she's coming out of the window type of thing. I don't know, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta work it up. I have the sketch that I did, so I wanna base it on that. Uh, the thing is, it's just been, it's been so long since I've done it. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while. I already know that. Sorry, I'm sipping my coffee. It, it takes me a while when I do it on, on the iPad. It's certainly gonna take me a while to do it on paper where I can't, if I make a mistake, I got to figure out how to fix it. On the iPad, making a mistake is very easy to fix because you can undo it. That don't work with pen and ink, man. It doesn't even really work with pencil. So I'm going to have to figure that one out. It's an interesting challenge. I'm not saying that as a negative. I actually think it's kind of neat to try it because it has been a while since I've done something physical. Um, but I got I to work that out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nothing, the only bad thing about coffee is that at some point the cup goes empty. And I don't want to just drink coffee all day. Because I know that's bad for you. 
I'm not of the age anymore where I can sustain drinking a ton of caffeine and not pay a price. You know, I may never, well, may never, I will never be any kind of health nut, but I try not to do things that are actively in contradiction to staying alive. So, yeah. All right, so I'll fill this in. And we'll just do a lot of this for a while. Uh, is that the same layer? I gotta look. It does appear to be. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to try this cross-hatching thing. And if the color is missing, then you're just going to see a lot of white space. So we're going to kind of want the color to be present there. If that makes sense. Um, where is the black? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's interesting. That's going to that's gonna be an interesting thing to do. Well, yeah, because I guess that would not extend all the way down. That would actually... That would kind of curl around. So I almost have to carve in the shadows or the yeah, the, the different color things, even where you can't see the lines. Yeah, this is gonna this is very interesting doing this like this. Cause that shadow wouldn't really extend all the way there. That part's okay. This would oh that one might. No, that one would not either, because again, see past here you oh geez, not that not that brush, please. You don't actually see the shadow lines, but I have to account for what I did shading wise in the spaces where you can see it. So there still has to be some viability to where the shadows would and would not be. Very interesting doing. I have not tried anything like this before, so I'm kind of I'm working this out in my head on the fly because just trying to see where these colors are. So that's all dark around that. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, to try to work out where things would be, because I gotta, I gotta try to follow these lines really closely. Not exact. It won't matter if it's exact, but I don't want to bleed into. I don't want to contradict. I guess is the better word. The shadow stuff I already have. So, also finding weird little places where I clearly missed colors, but I guess that's the. That's the whole zoom in enough and you'll find all your errors type thing. Yeah, there we go. That's good. There we go. Now, this is the other part. So again, I don't have to follow these lines exactly, but I have to be pretty close. Pretty close. Or actually, this one I don't because this is all dark up here. That's right. This is the dark area. So this we can just fill right in. Okay. Um, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, this is this is an interesting way of doing this. That again, I I I have not tried something like this before, so a lot of this is me. You're actually just watching me kind of work this out in my head as I'm doing it. Because this is sort of a new a new I mean I've done I've usually when I do cross hatching type lines, normally they're um, positive and not or they're additive as opposed to reductive? Subtractive isn't a word, is it? I don't think subtractive is a word. Normally they're adding to a piece as opposed to, they're, they're adding to the black levels as opposed to cutting into the black layer. I'll say it like that. That way I don't sound like a complete idiot. So doing it this way, that's really weird that the black line is like that. Hold on, I just wanna see that. Oh yeah, I gotta fix that. Well, you know why? You know why that black line is like that? It's because, um, the what do you call it is normally there. The shadow lines cover that particular black up. So that I actually have to just fix directly on the black layer because that is not right. Yeah, that, this is where the shadow lines help me. So that's, that's, a, that's where not having the shadow lines, I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to, oh, how am I going to do this? Let me think about this. I think I'm going, oh, you know what? Actually, it's still a color layer. No, that'd be okay. No, no, I know a way around this. The shadow lines are going to be the tricky bit. Because, see, the shadow lines, they they add a different thing to it. But we're going to worry about that when we get to it. I will, I will work that problem out 
when I'm there. One issue at a time. I'm not going to try to work too far ahead of myself or I'll never get anything done here. So, well, whoops. Give me that color. Well, that's... No, 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 wrong color, wrong color. There we are. Why does that look like it's a different color? Oh, it is a different color. That's not a black layer. That's where this goes. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, see, now like this, I'm going to have to ripple that like that. Yeah. Interesting. Sort of a, a what do you call it? A uh, painted myself into a bit of a box with this. Not much of one, not a big deal. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Undo that. Undo that. Redo that. Go to the correct layer and apply the eraser. There we are. There we go. See, I'm trying to erase and recorrect so many things at once that I'm going to have to do some, some layer hopping because, well, that one's okay. I don't mind that. I'm just looking to see where the bleeds are on this lighter layer since I'm in it already. Well, not much of that one, so we're okay there. All right, let's jump back to the dark green. There we are. Okay, we're on the correct layer. Let's get the paint. And let's fill this in. Yeah, this is okay, because this is all the same. So, oh, I saw it. I saw it. Do that. Give that a second. It'll come back. Come on, buddy. Come on back. I'll give it a second. It'll, there we go. And it's resyncing. Ah, 100% CPU utilization, of course. For no apparent reason. Still have not worked out what is causing that. Fortunately, it's fairly easy to fix. I actually thought at one point that the macOS upgrades had done something to it, but I have not actually been able to verify. I've not found any actual evidence that that's the case. This appears to be a specifically Twitch Studio beta problem. Where for whatever reason, it just... For software that is designed to do exactly what I'm doing, I'm not doing anything special to make this work. In terms of, you know, I'm not running some kind of weird special mirroring software, anything like that. And yet, it just can't handle... And this is, I think my, this setup is relatively, I mean, honestly, in this particular uh, scene, as they call them, which is the, all the different layers of what's being streamed, it's relatively sparse. This is not, I don't have 80 things going on, you know? I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, possibly six elements to this. Half of which, at least half of which are static, so they're not dynamic. I mean, the only really animated things are the tape deck has animation to it, but that's literally just a looped bit. Jeez, oh, there it is, CPU 100% again. Oops, let me do this here, redo it. That's what I'm saying, is this, there's nothing that heavy going on here. I don't know why on an, an M1 MacBook Pro, this thing hits 100%. There's just no reason for it. Oh, well, no, I'm sure, sorry. There's a reason for it, but it shouldn't be happening, I guess. Of course, there's a reason. There's always a reason things happen. So something is causing that, but I would struggle to be able to figure out what because I'm not doing anything that I think is particularly taxing in terms of what the software will allow me to do. I'm not running some kind of secondary software in the background that's forcing... Twitch Studio to run in some way that it's really not designed to. I'm just checking something. Okay, that's what I thought. So this should fold into here. And go along this. There we are. Okay. And let's go to the purple layer. And let's erase that just to where that is. Yeah, you can't really see it in the actual image because the shadow lines cover up that boundary which, not a huge deal. This is not anything that's hugely important, but since I'm right here, I might as well do it. Um, so yeah, I don't know why, 
and then it drops down. Now it's at 50%. That's the other thing is the weirdness of the spikes don't seem to correspond to anything in particular. It's not like if I zoom in, I'm looking at CPU, it's holding at 50. So there is no... And, and it was doing this before I even added the tape deck or whatever. So it, it's not even that I can say, well, maybe that looped file is... The, no, it's not the loop file. It was doing this before that loop file was present. So whatever it is, it's not that. And I'm not... Like I said, I, I don't know what I could be doing that would, what would make the CPU spike like that. So it's very, very odd that that's happening at all. Not a huge deal by any stretch. All it takes is me saying, okay, re-link up and it comes back. So it's okay. It's just puzzling. I don't mind things not working. I like to know why they're not working though. That is one thing. It's okay if there's something that's not functioning, as long as I know why, because then you can, you know, try to either, at least you have a reason. Not knowing why something's not working is hugely bothersome to me. I don't really like it. I'm not saying that as if that's some unique thing to me. I don't think anybody, uncertainty is one of those things that as human beings, we do not like. And this is something where I'm sitting here going, why is this happening exactly? And I can't work it out. Cannot figure it out. Let's go into the detail lines because um, let's go to this one. Because we, you know, what I'll do is I'll say so. This is we'll call this medium lines, and we'll call this thin lines. Okay, so that way I know exactly where I am. All right, I'm on the medium lines. Let's look for the medium lines. Okay, well, since there's so many thin lines here, I might as well just do this one, since I'm right here. Oh, that is a medium line. Wow, interesting, I couldn't tell. That's a thin line. Okay. Looking for lines. I don't mind the lines that go into the, the, gr the gray area, or the green areas, I just don't want them crossing borders keep them in their borders because that would not make sense. It's one thing to go into the color. That doesn't matter. But crossing the border line will not make a lot of sense. So those I do want to clean up. Again, stuff you wouldn't see because the black layer is covering it up. But depending on what I do with the lines, it might suddenly become visible. So I'd rather, not to mention, philosophically, I like clean lines. I like clean line work. So that if for any reason I did have to remove things, it's better to do this now. Well, that's interesting. Let me clean. That's This is more of an error I'm just fixing. There we go. Just something I wouldn't have noticed otherwise, I don't think. Okay, that's okay. All this where it's going like that is okay. I don't mind any of that. Let's look around over here. Oh, that might be it. Nope, oh, nope. We'll cut one more. Medium line. That That might be it. That's what I get. The minute I say that, of course, that's kiss of death. So I'll just stick with... That's all the ones I can see for the moment. Okay. Uh, there might be some down here. No, I got... Oh, there's one. Found one. Found two. I was going to say, if I found one, I'm going to find more than one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I saw you. Nice try, though. Oh, another one. Yep, see? That's what I get for saying I think I got them all. Of course you didn't get them all. Okay. These I would have been better on because they're intersecting with other things. So I'm sure I did check those to make sure that they weren't going into each other's uh, in, in crossing lines, crossing the streams. All right. I think we got the lines or at least it looks like we got them for now. We have enough of them that I can go back to what I was doing. I'll phrase it like that. Okay. So that's going to Fill this. Oh, back to this. I think I did that on purpose. I'm pretty sure that line. That line bubbling looks intentional. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. So we have a few days left of the year. That will be in 2023, which, you know, 
who knows what will come in 2023. It's an interesting world we live in. So I wouldn't even want to begin to try to speculate. Hopefully better things. We've, we've, we've been looking forward to a better year for a while. And so far, it's been a little slower coming, I think, than most people wanted. Which, you know, I don't know if there's much you can do about that. That's just the way it is. As the... Bruce Hornby? Is that the person who sang that song? I don't know. I can never remember the name of the... Probably getting that wrong. Whoever it is, somebody sang that song. Which I'm not going to sing, because I can't sing. But... We'll see. We shall see. One thing I do like about... Well, I shouldn't say one thing. I like a lot of things about California. I know California gets a reputation. A lot of people think it's a nutty place or just don't like it or whatever, and that's fine. You can like or dislike whatever you like, wherever you want to I be. Mean. I like it. And one thing that really isn't necessarily a selling point, I think, for most people, but is for me, is... I still celebrate New Year's on New York time because that's what I grew up with. So for me, it's New Year's way earlier than I would assume most native Californians probably consider it to be midnight California time. As I am not a native Californian, I go by New York time. So for me, the new year starts at 9 p.m., so I don't, uh, and as I get older, the idea of staying up till midnight, which I actually kind of do anyway, I end up watching things till about midnight anyway, so even though my I may be in bed earlier than that, I usually am watching something up until about midnight. That's generally where I land, so that's pretty standard for me, but yeah, new year, I... In New Year's, I can celebrate early. So if for some reason I fall asleep by midnight, and, and the other nice part is it lets me call my mother without feeling, I mean, it is late for her, but call her and say Happy New Year. You know, just nice little things. So yeah, when I, so we watch the, the live, when the ball comes down live, which in Times Square is, um, it would be uh, 9 p.m., Pacific time. What is that? What color is that? Or is that a black? Ooh, that's a little piece of black, I think, that escaped. There we go. I don't think that was supposed to be there. So, yeah, that's that's a nice thing. I do like that. I like celebrating New Year's a little earlier than midnight. Uh, but that's just, you know, that's just a particular me thing doesn't matter you sell i mean people celebrate it far earlier in other places so it's certainly not unique to to me to be like oh yeah it comes earlier here well it comes earlier in i think australia and many other countries that are far i mean london uk all that stuff they're all way ahead so they're getting new year's way before we are so it doesn't really matter it's more of a just you know Semantics wouldn't be the right word, but it is almost a semantic thing. Yeah. So we shall see what we see in 2023. I did not intend that as a rhyme. It just happened to come out that way. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting where we need to be here. Uh, let me, I want to make that look a little more intentional than it does. That looks almost accidental. So we'll do that. Is that this color? No, that's the, what is that color? That's got to be, uh-oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Just realized, wrong layer. Hold on. I got to fix what I just did here. Uh, did I get everything that I just did? Let me keep going backwards. Select layer. Okay, there we go. This is this is where I need to be. Okay. I'm on the right layer now. I'm glad I realized it when I did. Whoops. Because if I'd kept going, 
I mean, it wouldn't have been a it wouldn't have been a huge deal, but it would have been it would have been if anything just annoying. It would not have been a a major thing. It would have been fine, but better to realize it early than late. Let's say it like that. But it would have been fine. It wouldn't have destroyed anything. It all would have been all right. Uh, okay, so we need to do the black layers on there, or not black layers, the green layers here. Is that the black layer right there? Yeah, wow, that's a really, that's a very squarey black layer. I don't know what other word to use for it. A very squared off. I know squarey is not a word. Or, well, it may be a word. It's probably not a word in the way that I'm using it. I don't think the description for something that is square-shaped is squarey. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I don't think it's squarey. Okay, that is done. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point with that. Huh. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to overthink that. I'm, oh, I'm overthinking certain things now and I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna, I, I said this is supposed to be a casual image. I'm going to stick with that. It's supposed to be a casual image. So I'm not going to overthink some of the things that I'm looking at because it really doesn't matter. What it comes off as as a final image is going to be more important than the quote unquote accuracy of some of the things inside it. This is not meant to be a still life. So I am not going to sweat this type of thing. What I'm talking about is that some of the shadows, it, some of the shadows would not really make sense with how some of the lines are, but I'm not going to, but not in such a way that it's going to really, I think be visibly incorrect to people. I don't think anybody would actually notice. So I'm not going to worry about it. I am not going to sweat it too much. Because I don't think it really matters. Not in the end. I don't think in the end it actually matters. It will, as I said, it's going to appear more... The bigger thing is, does it... And this is a weird phrase to use with visual artwork, but does it feel accurate? Does it feel like it's what you would expect it to be? As long as it does that... The accuracy is honestly a secondary property. It really is. That is one thing I used to get very hung up on when I was younger, was the accuracy of something as opposed to its feeling, to how it would look as a final product as opposed to, well, is, it, is this quote-unquote accurate? Accuracy doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, so it's fine. Uh, it, it, it is not, it is not going to make that much of a difference, which isn't to say that I'm, you know, at some point might not go back and adjust some of these things. I probably will, but it's not something that matters right now. Okay. So now let's go ahead. I've done all the darkest green areas. Let's do the medium green or whatever we're calling this, which I guess is this layer. Let's colorize that. I can't even see it. Oh, was I not using the brush? I, I really can't see. Oh, it's already there. Okay. Okay, so I don't think I have to do anything. Oh, I do have to. I do have to with this one. Yeah, I have to fill. So the purple areas are the ones I'm worried about. Um, wait a minute. Oh, no, that's got to be the light. That's the lightest one. <laughs> what am I doing? This is this is completely wrong. Not wrong, just, you know. Let's go to the inking layer. And we will do this. There. Yeah, see, that's that's the kind of thing I... That's what I mean about... Is that really accurate? Not really, but it really doesn't matter either. It'll, it'll feel right when you see it. Well, actually, that won't. Because this would have... Let's do this. Yeah, there we go. Because that would have some darkness down to it. So we will... We'll extend that to there. There we are. See, none of this is sketched out either. This is just... And I just completely destroyed what I was doing. 
There we go. There we go. That's what I'm trying to do is this. Is have it where you have these intermediate layers or colors. Not layers, colors. I mean, they are layers, but just kind of, again, it's more about the, the feeling of what you're getting as opposed to what it actually is. Where are we time-wise? Oh, we're at an hour. Jeez, that hour flew by. I wasn't even really paying attention. Probably going to bring the stream to a close soon. Um, Cause this is generally when uh, Twitch studio really, well, number one, my iPad is warm, which I don't like to, I don't like to push the iPad too hard there either. It's like, Hey man, you know, don't overdo it. Uh, but also Twitch seems to get extraordinarily unstable when you get around the hour mark for whatever reason. Again, I almost said for some, for no reason, but that's not correct. There's a reason. I just don't know what it is. Uh, okay, there's the blobbiness there. So these, this is looking all right. This is kind of where I want it to be. More or less. Oh, you know, I missed a little bit here. Let's go to that layer. Let's fill that in. Uh, I think I did. I did. I did that. Okay. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. Wow, that is the closest. I was actually starting to sneeze as I hit the mute. I don't know if you heard it, but I, I barely, I was basically turning because I don't like to sneeze on my monitor or my iPad. So I was turning and trying to guide the mouse and clicking madly. I don't know if the mic picked that up right as I, uh, right as I was sneezing. So that was, that was the closest I've come to sneezing on. I mean, that was, that was almost uh, something. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a big deal. It wouldn't, I, I still would have been turned away from the mic, but it still probably would have been a pretty loud sound, which I don't like to, I don't know how sensitive people are to sound sometimes, so I don't want to bomb them with a unexpected noise, but that, that was close. That's the closest it's been in quite a while in terms of almost sneezing, right? Uh, sneezing where I didn't have the mic muted. So that was the, the visuals of what I was doing in the background were probably quite funny. You know what? This looks like it's pretty good. This looks like a good spot. I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss any areas. It doesn't look like I did. I think everything that I want to cover is covered. So the idea will be, I may do a stream again in a little bit. Ow. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and being in that position for a long time isn't probably great for my arm either. But uh, you know what? I'm going to do one thing. Because this is this is just something I meant to, I meant to do this before now, and I didn't. So let's turn off the white layer. Let's turn on. Because the Santa hat really should be its own contained thing. So um, let's turn the. Let's do a layer right above here. Let's turn off the blacks. There we go. Let's go ahead and colorize this with white. Because this is really its own thing. So this, this will be the last thing I do before I break the stream for now, or stop the stream for now. This also kind of bypasses the need for a mask on that other layer, because I'm just going to put this on its own elevated separate layer. Um, yeah, so let's put that there. Let me turn the background off, because that's going to hide where I don't, yep, there, exactly. That's what it's doing. It's hiding where I don't have white. Okay, let's color that in. And I'm going to have to do the black red because I just realized I didn't do that in its own separate layer. Oh, no, there it is. I, but I don't think that's its own layer. I think I put that on the same layer as the other reds, which isn't a big deal, except that the, ha the Santa hat isn't really part of the original image, so I want to have it broken out and separated. And instead of doing it with masking, which I could, it just it's just easier if I can put this in its own little pod or bubble or whatever you want to call it and uh, and just be able to turn the whole thing including colors on and off without impacting the other parts of the image so let's see that fill that in there we are the gray I think is only yeah that's this see this is an only Santa hat thing 
So I'm going to move that up. Come on, move up. Move up. That will go on top of that. I will fix these little erase lines here. I think because of where they are and, and the masking, I didn't have to do this. So again, this is this is also just cleaning up my line work, which is a good thing to do. And uh, once we have the Santa hat isolated, then I think that'll be where I'm going to take a break, at least for now. I will probably come back because I am having a good time with this image. Probably come back later and do a stream a little later in the day. Just depends. Okay, now, the other thing is, I don't think the reds are actually present here either, right? No, of course they're not. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't really do this the way I should have done this. And you know what I'm going to do? Instead of making a ton more work for myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate each of these red layers. All right, I'm going to take these and I'm going to move them up to right... Well, right there would be fine. And then this can go right underneath. So now... Turn those colors off, right? So now I can just take a big fat eraser and erase. Okay, well, let's do this the smart way. Let's actually, I'm going to jump that eraser way up. Look at that. Just wipe out the reds I don't want, which is pretty much any of them that aren't in the Santa hat. See how easy this is? Way easier than recoloring. Wipe all those out. Okay, now let's bring that way down again to 10. It's still pretty fair. It's a fairly big eraser still. Now we can turn our colors back on. Turn our black layer back on. The layer mask is no longer required because now the hat exists above everything. I turn the whites back off. And now what I have is I will just group this together and call it Santa Hat. So now if I turn the Santa hat off, now I got to come to the actual red and whatever layers. Get rid of that. Get rid of all that. Got to go to the white layers. See, in this way, I'm not interfering with any of my core colors or elements. Perfect. So now the Santa hat is completely isolated from the rest of the image. So now I can just turn that on and off as I need to and not worry about it. We'll leave it on. Still is holiday stream. Okay, you know what? This is where I'm gonna stop for now. So I think this is actually a good spot. Yeah, because we're, we're getting there. I mean, compared to where this was originally, my original plan wasn't even to have even near this level of uh, color or anything in it, um, which is good. This is, this is actually an ideal thing is just to have the evolution of the image as the stream has gone on. I, I don't think I've done any part of this that hasn't been in a stream. So at some point, I will probably, I mean, I already have it. Hopefully the time lapse is running. Hold on. I guess I should check that. Have I been time lapsing this? Oh yeah, look at that. There it is. So this time lapse has been going the entire time. Oh, yeah. So you can see it. Okay. I just want to check because I some of my images, I forgot to turn the time lapse thing on. So at some point, this is going to be a fascinating time lapse because you're just going to see the the entire evolution of it. Um, yeah. So, okay. Let me see. So let me see. Does this work? Bang. There we are. Well, in any event, that's where I'm going to take a break for now and let my iPad rest and uh, take a break myself and relax a bit but thanks for stopping by and sticking around john i hope this is I, I really i genuinely never have an idea if this stuff is entertaining or not but people when they come by tend to stick around so i guess it can't be terrible i guess um but i never really know and i'm glad you got to do a walkthrough with your daughter that's great i i always i i just did an interview with somebody yesterday and at the tail end of it um uh, it's an author named Matt Dale who's written uh, and now has a second edition of a book about Quantum Leap, the TV show. Uh, the original one, and he's going to be expanding it to cover the new one. And it was a great interview because it was actually one of my favorite types of people to talk to. A guy who was just a casual fan of the show and just got really interested and started kind of compiling information and putting something together and thought it might work for a book. Not a writer, no writing background whatsoever. 
and just was a fan of something, saw that there was a lack of a book that really went into the chronology and the detail and all that stuff, made a version of the book and got more people that backed it on Kickstarter than expected, then found more and more information, has a second edition, and really has found something that he likes doing and at least so far is finding increasing success with. I mean, he's doing a show where he's talked. The creator, the one of the co-creators of the original show at one point contacted him to ask information about the new show that they're doing, to clarify things. I was blown away by that. I love when people are able to, to create stuff and, and have a good time with it. I, I really, I just love that. So to hear you get to go with your daughter and, and do something you enjoy, I, man, that stuff is great. I always like hearing that stuff. There's so much negativity in the world. There's so many bad things and so many terrible stories that you hear all the time. I just like, I like finding little, little examples of people that are creating and having a good time. So just hearing you went for a photo walk with your daughter, I, that's, that makes my day. And being able to do a stream like this and be able to draw and have the time to do it is also, it is a, it is a wonderful position to be in. Because you never know when things might change. But for right now, I can do it. Oh, that's okay. I, I, I'm always shocked when anybody tunes in. So I'm just happy that, that I can do a couple of these in a, in a time that works for certain people. Because it's just tough to, it's tough to try to thread the needle on different stuff. You know, so that's why I'm trying to do some early ones when I can. In any event, have a good rest of your Thursday, if it is in fact Thursday for you. And if you're watching this later, thanks for watching this whenever and go out there, create something, or go on a photo walk. That is still creation. You're enjoying nature and taking photos. Or sketch stuff while you're out there. Or just enjoy it. You know what? Why not? Just enjoy nature. Just go outside, breathe some fresh air if you live in a place that has fresh air. All right, well, go cook your dinner, John. I'm going to sign off. Thank everybody for watching, however you do, whenever you do. Go create something if you can, and take care.